Hey Washington Fish Questers, Blake here. A question I've gotten asked over the years doing the channel is what is the exact layout of my boat? I have a Lund WC-14, it's kind of a utility boat. I always wanted a Lund for some reason, and uh, finally got one. It was uh, before my son Russell was born. So I believe I got this in the summer of 2013. So at the time of this filming, it's been on, been on the water for 10, 11 years. And uh, I know for sure a longtime viewer named Lingcod has asked me what this boat's laid out like. So this is me answering you, Lingcod. Sorry, it took me a couple of years, and I've, I've been asked by other people too. So let's go ahead and start at the bow. All right, so starting at the bow, as you can see here, I got a, a line off the front. There's an anchor there, so I keep my anchor up here. Then I got my other line there to hold the boat, you know, to the dock and just hold it for launching. I put these two lights on it for my port and starboard lights. They can just clip on. They're bike lights. They clip on really well to that, that little front area there. Then besides that, I just use this as a storage area. I thought of making a casting platform before. You could just get a piece of plywood, you know, and take out the, the factory uh, piece of blunt plywood here and extend that out, you know, maybe with the support under it. But the older I get, the more I like to just use things for as they were built. So I actually like this big empty space here, you know, so you can see I got a cooler there, extra flotation, extra line. You know, the anchor usually sits there. Usually you put a lot up here in this area. It's kind of like the storage area. And coming back here, got the first seat, the first passenger seat in the front there. And uh, not too much to say about that, but yeah, nothing else going on here besides that seat. Now this looks really bad because that was an ill-fated attempt to seal it up. So, yeah, you can kind of see it there. See that there's a leak. If you move that way, it'll leak a little more. There we go. See that leak there? So I've had this Lund for 10 years now, and it's been a very reliable boat, and it was very cheap too. You know, not including the trailer, I bought a brand new for somewhere in the 2000s of dollars. It was like $2,400 before tax or something, which seems crazy now uh, this year when I'm saying this. Uh, but 10 years ago, that's how much they cost. Even with the trailer, it came in under four grand, brand new for both. So it was a really good deal been a great boat but uh those leaks the things that are troubling about them is those aren't rivet leaks those are stress fractures so that means i either got to patch them up which i tried to do or basically drill a big enough hole to put a rivet in there so i do think that puget sound and especially the straight one to fuca and nia bay are just kind of like too big a water for these like wc-14s but that said i don't know that they really built them for for that size that big of water all right so then here's the middle the middle uh I don't know, call them, I guess, whatever you call it, area. All these have flotation in them, too, by the way. I thought of carving them out and making a fish box, but uh, I don't want to lose any flotation. So usually people sit here, especially if the boat's traveling because there's less less uh, getting bumped up and down here. And so there we go. That's the second passenger seat. And then right there is where I put a downrigger. And usually that's a man the, the manual downrigger. I have an electronic and two manuals. Uh, one's a backup. But yeah, I put, so I have a pedestal mount here. It comes off goes over the side and whoever's sitting up here whoever the guest is or first mate or whatever that's where their downrigger would go if they are using one as you can see i usually have the oars between my seat and this seat as well i'll put poles there too sometimes or i'll put them over here one way or the other then heading back Just watch you watch look at the water rush back here <laughs> it's got some leaks as you can see i've tried to seal it with the marine caulk but you can see where the pinholes just kind of they keep coming out you know uh it kind of is what it is i'd say it's got so many holes at this point and there's a there's a bucket of crab bait that's not always there and associated garbage <laughs> here's my seat captain's chair yeah pretty cool and uh under here i don't know if you can see it oh there goes the sump because i'm standing near it so down there is my boat box so it has a registration emergency stuff all that good good stuff then uh, I got this on my seat. I also have uh, this pole holder here. I usually use as a net holder. You can put a net in there, and just because of the physics, the net really can't jump out unless you like, like basically turn the boat upside down. So that's usually where I put the net, so it's just kind of right behind me, out of the way. It's like the most out of the way it could really be, since I'm going to land all my fish on the port side. So on this side, let me move my other camera out of the way here. This is the side where most of my action occurs. So here is my uh, downrigger mount. As you can see, it wasn't high enough to get over the electric downrigger. wasn't high enough to get over. So my close personal friend, Greg Anderson of Anderson's True Value down in Centralia, 
uh, swung by his place and he he installed this just just drill on a couple pieces of wood and he said hey that'll do you for a couple of years but you're going to want to change it out and i will say after 10 years it's getting there but i don't know how much longer i will have this boat and it's uh, that's just regular wood <laughs> untreated wood and it's lasted all this time so uh, keep in mind though these screws are going all the way in to the bench that's why it has lasted so much time and hadn't ripped out i got a uh, you know a cup holder there yeah, real nice to have my drinks and all that good stuff. Hang stuff off the side there. Yeah, I'll put this knife there, see what I mean? Yeah, isn't that nice? I got uh, right now just the one fish finder that's a GPS uh, depth finder combo. Usually I have two, I used to have two, I call them the Towers of Power. It was just a regular depth sounder and then it was a GPS unit. Then right here, I got, uh, that is just my light, my navigation light, the white navigation light. You know that I'd have in tandem with my, my port and my starboard uh, red and green lights, respectively. That is a Scotty. I think these are often used on kayaks, and it just pops up back there. Uh, then, as you noticed, I have a sump pump, unfortunately, because the boat's so dang linky. And uh, it's just fine. You know, boats supposed to take on water. So you see it's just wedged back there behind the battery. See if we can see some water getting pumped out there. Eh, you can't really see it, but trust me, it is. And then underneath the sump, you can kind of see the transducer. So there's this little sticky thing I ordered online, and it was like 20, 30 bucks. I think it's more like 20, actually, 15 to 20. And uh, yeah, you can just pretty much screw your transducer on there without putting another hole in the boat. So that's really nice. It's all powered by this 25 horsepower uh, Yamaha. You know, I had a 15 power Tahatsu slash Nissan on there for so many years. And once it finally broke uh, last season, or two seasons ago, I suppose, when I posted this, it was a real blessing in disguise because having that 25 horsepower is so much nicer than the 15. And just, uh, you know, these new these new engines are so nice if you just keep, keep good care of them. Let's see, what else, what else? I think that's dang near it. Got my seat, like I said. Got the gas tank down there. I think that's about all the news that's fit to print. I will say, well, my, my life jacket's on it right now, but the... Uh, Having the downriggers where they are has been wonderful. This person works theirs, I work mine. That's been great, just having that kind of autonomy to work your own downrigger, whatever depth you want, all that good stuff. There is safety concerns with having a downrigger that close to your face in case the line snaps and it comes and like, you know, disfigures you for life or something. So I totally recommend using braid if the downrigger is that close opposed to the cable because that's what will get you. Like, so yeah, the, if I'm using the, the manual one, there's not even the, the chance that the downrigger itself can snap back with the electronic one although i think it's like extremely unlikely that one does can bounce up and down but as long as you're using braid uh no real danger there well there you have it that's how my lund wc14 is set up pretty simple setup but it's really gotten the job done i've went to sell it a couple of times but it is such a simple easy to maintain boat easy to store i stored it in the garage that i've never been able to really pull the trigger the leaks bother me but with the with the bilge pump it's not so bad you know it just pumps it out when it gets too much water in I always wear my boots, so I either wear boots or sandals. <laughs> either got to accept, embrace the water or, or keep clear of it, you know. And I can also put it on the false floor if I wanted to someday, but haven't yet. So at any rate, this is it. I don't know if I'd buy another one or not. Uh, I think that they'd probably be fine to handle, like, marine areas maybe 10 through 13 generally. But, you know, I fished this thing out of CQ. I fished it out of Inner Nia Bay. And it's frankly not tough enough. I don't don't know how to sugarcoat that. Uh, that's where all those stress fractures have come from. The, the hole is just a little too thin. If they had another millimeter or two on that aluminum, maybe it'd be a different story, but it ain't. It started leaking about five or six years ago. And that might have been more due to me because I would beach it so much. And then I'd push out transom first, which if I had to do it over again, I would have pushed out. I would have kind of flipped it around and pushed it out both side because, or bow side, because the transom is where it started leaking about five or six years ago and then those stress fractures have started to uh really pop up in the last two years and last year especially so uh, i'd say it's kind of falling apart <laughs> but but hey it still floats and uh it's doing the job so there you go question answered see you next time on washington fish quest